Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. We're so good, Tom. We're too good. Yeah, someone should I take think, us down. A, I think a we peg. might be too good. Shit! Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Gosford Park. Gosford oh. Park. It's it's finally happened. Mm, at long last. USA Films presents a film by Robert Altman. I was just wondering if you wanted some company. Oh, I suppose life must go. Alan Bates, Stephen Fry, Michael Gambon, Derek Jacoby, Kelly McDonald, Helen Murin, Jeremy Northam, Clive Owen, Ryan Phillippe, Kristen Scott Thomas, Maggie Smith, Emily Watson. Tough luck on whoever's got any secrets to hide. Oh, how horrid. Gosford Park. Perhaps the butler did it. This is, uh, so it's Thursday, and so I'd like to, uh, give a big warm shout out to Harris and Millie, uh, the pair responsible for making us watch a movie that I love, Tom. Gosford I wa- Park. <laughs> I watch this movie so much. This yeah, is, it's, I, yeah, it's a film. It's a film. It might be one of my favorite movies by just the fact that I watch it often and f- it makes me feel good. Have you... So, I, I, I'm under the impression you hadn't seen this movie before. Uh, correct. I have not okay. seen this before. So, uh, what did you think? Uh, I liked it. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's fucking Gosford Park. Yeah, it's a likable movie. It has a hell of a cast. Um, God damn, who's... All right, Michael Gambon, Maggie Smith, Helen Mirren, Clive Owen... Um, shit. Uh, Ryan Phillippe, Bob Balahan. I'm not even looking. Bob Balaban. I'm not looking. I'm not looking at the actual cast. Let me look Uh, at it. Kelly McDonald. Kelly McDonald, Um, right. Tom Hollander. Emily Watson. Emily Watson, yep. Um, Uh, God, there's so many people in this movie. Uh, uh, what's his name? The fucking detective. Uh. Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry, thank you. Stephen Fry shows up. Um, it's just, it's the talent. The goddamn Charles Dance. Fucking Char- Charles, Charles Dance. Dance, who is barely in this movie. Yeah, they don't have enough fucking room. They're yeah. like, sorry, Charles. Sorry, Charles y- Dance. Yeah. It's too much movie for us to fit Charles Dance into it more. It's incredible. Yeah. Um. And so it's just like a very big, like, murder mystery that takes place in a house. This is... It's... I'm going to push back against that slightly as we go on. It's kind kind of a murder mystery. That's not really what it's about. Well, no, 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 absolutely not. I just find it to be... I guess... All right. So spoilers for Gosford Park. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we're going to spoil it. That's what we do. Right. But this, uh, I think, as a murder mystery, is well crafted in that it pummels you with red herrings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And it is what's interesting about this film. The thing I, I, no matter how many times I watch it, I always forget the murder doesn't happen until about an hour and fifteen minutes. In. Mm-hmm. It takes a long time for the murder to happen. Yeah. Um. And I think the reason they do that because I think. <sighs> When you look at famous murder mystery movies, like, I don't know, Clue, mm-hmm. and is that it? That's the only one, That's right? the only one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people having to, like, explain themselves. Like, th- you know, the murder happens right away, and then there's a lot of, like, well, this is my history with them. This is my history. Sometimes there might have to be flashbacks. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, like, there, sitting around and talking. There are a couple of moments... Uh, like that in this film which i guess it's hard to avoid when you're doing yes. something that at least has the artifice of a murder mystery where the the story fucking stops so somebody can deliver exposition about one of the characters that is directly related to the murder yes. yeah there's uh, definitely um, moments i've yeah. watched it so many times again i can't really 
Like, and this is what they might. Uh, as, I um, mean, as a person who's seeing this for the first time, uh, and it's a movie that was made a specific, intentionally with overlapping dialogue. Like, I think everybody's wearing a lav. Right. Um, so it's like, but even in that like situation where I'm not, I'm seeing it for the first time, and it's uh, intentionally difficult to catch all of the dialogue. Even from that standpoint, the movie, the actors in these scenes might as well have stopped and looked directly into the camera to deliver these <laughs> well, yeah. lines. Well, there's parts where Clive Owen literally looks like right at us. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way this movie, I guess just what's interesting about it is if you don't know it's a murder mystery, then you're not thinking about it. But if you do, it gives you all these pieces and it gives mm -hmm. you so much. That when the murder happens, they don't have to stand around and be like, well, this is that person's motivation, and here's that person's. Yeah. You already kind of know. Um, I think, and this is what I have to ask you, how obvious was it? Because well, watching it again, it really seemed obvious to the, me. It's a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. Um, because it is incredibly obvious. Uh, except for the fact that... <sighs> So Helen Mirren's the murderer. Um, yes. Hel and, and it's, uh, we are, but some, like, uh, Michael Gambon is poisoned. Um, and stabbed. And stabbed. Somebody comes in and stabs him after he's been poisoned. So somebody comes in intending to murder him, thinking they have murdered him, when in reality he was already dead. They stabbed a dead right. body because he'd already been murdered. The movie does not conclusively tell us who that second person is. No, but it's pretty clear. Is it? Oh, no, you're you're right. It isn't necessarily is it? clear. Yeah. yeah, that is really fun. Yeah. I think I always in my head was like it's Clive Owen. Um that's because... the, that's the obvious and most logical but they throw enough where you're like fuck is it Dorothy? Like it, right. she keeps saying I would kill for Mr. Jenkins and it's Every like really everybody... weird. Everybody yeah, everybody acts weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, everybody has secrets. I, my favorite red herring, of course, is Ryan Phillippe, mm -hmm. who's just sketchy the whole time. And then you learn he's just an actor researching a role. Right. He's uh, just like a an doofus asshole. actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you're right, is that they get, they throw a lot. And I think that's where that's I think the strength of like you don't I it never occurs to me, Helen Mirren, because they're throwing like they want they play it really f loosely about Clive Owen, where it just feels like they don't care if we know early on. Like he's very smirky, he's very weird. Right. He's uh, like, when they, they yeah. say he when they say he's found dead, he's not surprised. Um, and it's because they're it's like <laughs> one more red herring, which is that one of the murders is a red herring for the actual murderer, Helen Mirren. Yeah. So that's like the actual thing that they're trying to conceal from us kind of sort of when she actually poisons him it's very obvious they all they all right? but tell us she has just poisoned him they literally show her do it yeah <laughs> yeah we see her um, do it but it's that's like a double red herring where it's like well would they show that if it was her you know that would be so obvious yeah um and yeah it's just she fucking poisoned him mm -hmm. because of the stuff that we kind of they roll out as well, which is that Clive Owen is actually Michael Gambon's son. Yeah, the motive is the mystery. Yeah, the motive is the mystery, which you can sort of kind of slowly see. Yeah, you start to piece it together. Yeah. Right. Because there's just implications that Michael Gambon is clearly fucking around with the staff. But then they play with that because you think like, oh, he's making out with that lady or not making out, he's he's railing that lady downstairs, and then it's revealed that that's another person that she's railing. Yeah. And so they they really like these twists and turns where, like, even when it is true, it's not true, you know? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. So the, the, the idea is that Michael Gambon is clearly fooling around with staff. Um, he has uh, many, like, like, secret kids. Yes, um, specifically with his... Uh employees at a vac he owns a factory right um and they sort of they roll that out and again it's it's just one more piece so like you may notice it you might not but they that's definitely one of those moments where they kind of stop everything to talk about it yes and the reveal um there's also a scene where not helen mirren the sister or no maybe is helen mirren walks in to, to clive owens mm -hmm. 
uh, place and like sees the picture of his mom. It's Helen Mirren. And like, cl- yeah, and she's like clearly haunted by it. Yeah, she's yeah, she sees the photograph and then immediately goes and murders Michael Camp. <laughs> yes, immediately, <laughs> as you would do. Yes, yeah, so um, you're like, well, that meant something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and so, like, yeah, the reveal is that it's her kid. She see, she notices, oh, that's my kid here. He's going to kill Michael Gambit, because why else would he be why here? Why else would he be here? Yeah. So, basically, to protect him, she uh, poisons him first. And it's a great fucking performance at the end, where she's in the room crying. And, like, she keeps it so together throughout the whole movie you know right yeah because she's like one one head of the servants yeah so she's completely composed in every scene so when she finally breaks down in her last scene it's really really uh it's a really good scene she got a oscar yeah. nom for this damn right she did she's helen goddamn Mirren. yeah this is uh robert altman directing uh one uh, the writers is um bob balaban is uh credited and robert altman for the same credit, based upon an idea by, which is interesting. The actual re- writing was um, Julian Fellows, mm-hmm. who is uh, responsible for Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey was initially conceived as a spinoff of this film. Yeah, that uh, that checks out. Yeah, because Very... re- really the movie is about there's it's it's a it's a hunting it's a weekend hunting party at this rich manor in the 30s. Uh, and it just keeps cutting back and forth between the upstairs and the downstairs. And the upstairs is all the rich people, and the downstairs is all the servants. Right. And yeah, it's really kind of about that, right? It's more about um, it's more about class divisions and how like the servants are so invisible to these people uh, until they suddenly aren't. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, I, like I think I was reading stuff about this movie uh, uh, after watching it, um, but there's a couple of cool tricks that not really tricks it's just you know decisions that altman makes like there's a servant in every single shot for instance Ooh, i love that every shot there's a servant yeah i mean it begins Um, with um maggie smith who (laughs) she's fucking killing it in this movie she's a she's a troll she also also got an oscar nom but yeah she plays an absolute goblin in this movie yeah and like a great great like she knows she's just (laughs) disturbing all the shit insulting everybody taking everybody down a peg loves gossip my favorite is when the servant <laughs> spills the coffee on ryan Philippi and she absolutely loses it yeah she's just so delighted yeah it's uh um richard e she's grant the, is the guy that spills the coffee on him right she's just the devil uh yeah she's great well, she'll do things like she'll say oh that's good that you brought that uh, it's you know i quite agree with you you should have only brought there's no need to to wear different dresses for for party two nights yeah. in a row why not wear the same dress and then she yes. gets disgusted and walks away and then maggie smith is like well green is really a shitty color like she's <laughs> it's either a backhanded compliment or she's shitting directly on your head exactly it's perfect um, character <laughs> perfect because you're sometimes she's more I think what makes her like likable, oddly likable, is she's while she is extremely like uh, uh, pampered and unaware of that. She's harmless. Sh- she's mostly mean to the other rich people. Yeah, like she kind of she gets along with the servants because she likes the gossip that mm-hmm. they have to bring her. Right. So they provide yeah. a service, a social service for her. Right. Like every time Kelly McDonald comes back upstairs to tender her, she's like, "Tell me the gossip." <laughs> Yeah, but she's still very, like, she takes them for granted. Oh, she's yeah. She's still yeah. a rich snob. Yeah, she still treats uh, them like shit. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. She's, like, chaotic good somehow. And, like, it begins with her in a in a car being, like, can't open a thermos, so they have to stop and open it for her. So they immediately establish them as children. Like, yeah. they're all children. Yeah. Uh, and, they're and all they're, whining and They're and standing fighting. there on the side of the road for maybe a minute. Uh, cause Jeremy Northam pulls up and he's like a, 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 a famous actor who was a real life actor. Oh, really? Yeah. The movie they're talking about, The Lodger, is an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh, cool. Like, it's a real movie that this actual actor was in. Um, That's great. 
he pulls up and starts talking to him because he's like cousins or, or whoever of one of the people that's going to be at the party. So they're they're by the road for maybe 60 seconds. And then Maggie Smith is like, I'm freezing to death. Yeah. Shut the t-. Like, they're so pathetic and helpless. They're just all babies. The, the yeah. fucking scene where they actually go on the shoot when they start doing, yeah. shooting the pheasants and it's just chaos. Mostly, like, from, just mostly from fun. Gambin. Like, Gambin mostly can't hit Gambin. shit. <laughs> so he's just... Yeah. And I think uh, Emily Watson has a line later where he's like, he loves to go hunting. He can't shoot for shit. But yes. He really loves it. And I find that oddly endearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like... He's got that real Brian Cox succession vibes where it's like everybody wants something from him. He's the distant, rich guy. Um... Who, of course, gets murdered. Yeah. He is a, uh, a, a, a very similar character to his to his character in the the Cook the Thief, his wife and her lover. Right. In and Harry he, Potter, you know? And Harry Potter, sure. I was just going to point out, he is also murdered by Helen Mirren in that film. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's delightful. Yeah. Yeah. How many Harry Potters are in this? I guess the only the two? Buck. Is it just the two? Um, isn't Fry? Doesn't he show up in Harry Potter? Oh, he must, right? He's, I, maybe he reads the books. I think that's it. I don't know. I think I th- he. Uh, I yeah. think he narrates the audio books. Um, but well, you got Maggie that- Smith. You got is it? Is it just Maggie Smith and Gambin? I don't know. I could do a connections and and whatever search on IMDb, but that'll take a second. So Speaking I'll do of, that when we're uh, done recording. I did read that the originally Kenneth Branagh was supposed to play the inspector, but he wound up becoming unavailable so they had Stephen oh, Fry wow. come in yeah and, and I could, I could Fry... totally see Brana in that role but Stephen Fry is also great oh yeah because the point of that role is just to be bumbling yeah um, he's a loud mouth bumbling idiot detective yeah yeah uh, and he um, like basically there's all this tension about like what is he gonna find out and then it's kind of broken where he go- he's like oh we have no reason to suspect any of the help we're looking for someone with real connections yeah and like even if you don't know who it is at this point, you know it's one of the help, you know? Like, yeah. it's, it's like, very obvious that it's like, yeah, the, these are the people who would actually have a reason. There's so much they've woven in where it's, like, clearly that their lives intersect uh, with Gambins. It, 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 yeah, in point of fact, like, they're, they can't, like, detangle themselves from the lives of these rich people. So it's, like, the, yeah. the very opposite of what Stephen Fry said is true. <laughs> Right, like they and are he's... inextricably connected to to the right. uh, to Michael Camden and everybody else. Does this movie remind you a lot? Um, obviously, it came first, and it's probably the this connection is probably on purpose. Feels very Knives Out, right? Oh yeah, uh, well, bum- it, yeah. bumbling detective, um, fighting family, inheritance, rich, mm-hmm. a murder mystery uh, that's not really about a murder exactly um uh, yeah no 100 percent. it's yeah i do think this is a better murder mystery it's because yeah. you're right is that it's not really about that but it does try to well and there's hide th- it better yeah to the point where it uh as we mentioned earlier it's not we don't conclusively know who the the second murderer was yeah just that it could be a all, lot of people because all clive owen says is she, Kelly McDonald asks, says, like, so you did poison him? And he's like, I didn't poison him. And then she says, oh, so you did murder him. Like, like when like when he reveals, like, she says something like, well, if you stabbed a corpse, you must have known he was a corpse when you stabbed him. How, I don't see I mean, how you yeah, could do that. Says, so that. Have means you ever, you, like, stabbed a corpse before? Right. He's like, "Why? how would you know? Have you ever stabbed he, a dead body before? He answers a lot of questions with questions. She says stuff like, why would you kill him? And he's like, would a son not have a reason to kill his father? Why would you he, hate him is what she asks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why would you hate him? Mm-hmm. And so, like, he's either like a weird edgelord. <laughs> who's I mean, like, he's definitely that. Didn't, well, yeah. Who, like, wants her to think that he's a murderer. Um, like, or or he's the murderer. Because otherwise, most people would be like, wait, hold on, hold on. I didn't kill, I didn't kill him. Like, if they didn't... Um, so yeah, it's it's heavily implied just because of the way he acts. It's like why wouldn't he have been the murderer? But you're right, he mm-hmm. never explicitly nope. says it. Nope. And they do enough where there's so many other characters. There's so many other characters with motive and ability. Like they they very yeah. he Altman very deliberately shows us like four or five characters 
uh, slinking off right before the murder happens. Yeah, and then all of those characters are all fucked up afterwards because they're mm-hmm. either guilty or they they just have a bunch of you know bullshit rattling around. And yeah, that sequence, the murder sequence, is really well done mm-hmm. because again, uh, you don't know at first that he's already been poisoned, so you don't know that it also like this sequence doesn't re- like it's meant to distract you because uh, it shows the killer coming in and stabbing. Mm-hmm. Gambit, it just doesn't show who you can kind of tell that it's probably a, a a male. It's probably, but not definitively. Yeah, exactly. Um, and meanwhile, everybody's kind of being entertained by the actor playing the piano by Jeremy Northam. Smith. Yeah, yeah, it's except her Maggie attitude Smith, about like it. Is, heckling him. Well, at because at first she does the same thing that she did with the dress, where she's like, "Oh, it is kind of somehow more than background music." And then as he plays yeah. more music, she's like, "Jesus Christ, will he shut the fuck up?" Like, <laughs> and then by the end, people are clapping, and she's like, "Don't, nobody clap. It's Don't encouraging clap for that. You're encouraging." <laughs> it's so good. Ah. She's so good. Uh, yeah, she's such a goblin. Yeah, she really is. Um, and I mean, of course, Gambin is killing it. He he plays he plays a great <laughs> ogre. Oh, he yeah, he always has. Um, yeah, ever. I mean, again, everybody's fucking top of their game in this. Yeah, movie. The, the the just the sheer size of the cast is unreal, and like most people are faces that you recognize. You're like, oh shit, it's yeah. that guy or it's that lady. Right, it hadn't even occurred to me the fucking the, the the dude who's the pirates, pirates of the Caribbean, there sitting over there. Yeah, Tom Holland. Jam. Yeah, Tom Hollander. Like he's one of those people whose name I don't really know, but whose face. Yeah, I constantly see. Yeah, if if yeah, he for like a a stretch there in like the the uh, mid to late aughts, he was like go to British villain in American yeah. films. Yeah, he's got British villain face. A lot yeah. of them do. A lot of them do. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot of they can go either way, but he, him, bam, perfect. The casting is so good. Ryan Phillippe, man, when he's like one of those actors that like he doesn't really do much, but then when he does, it's like he he had that teen idol uh, mm-hmm. right, beginning, was, right? right right before this, uh, like right before this, he had uh, I know what you did last summer in Cruel Intentions. Oh wow, because this film he, is two thousand one, right? And I feel like Phillippe. Uh, immediately after that was like i'm doing like the way of the gun and this yeah that's uh, right i forgot about way of the gun yeah the way of the gun man like and christopher mcquarrie right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sweet movie like he definitely tried to break out of that well yeah and then and this then, and then uh, what not trap well not traffic crash crash Oof. then he did crash and we were like you you blew it philippi oh you but blew then it. he he also did mcgruber oh and we were like you're back you're back an incredible Phillipe. film you're back, baby. And then he did Wish Upon, and we were like, go to hell. Go to hell, Philippi. <laughs> and then he did The Circle. And then he did The Lincoln Lawyer. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at his We're just going right through, now. like, thrillers now. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is kind of a tough one, because I don't know what we're going to say other than how much this movie rules. It's hard. I, I guess I want to identify what about this movie really, really gets me going. Because, like, we've talked about, like, good the need for good quality murder mysteries, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, what would you say is, like, what's the real good shit in terms of murder mysteries? Uh, and you mean anything Agatha Christie, pretty much. Just I mean, I, movies. I, oh, movie-wise. Um... See, this is the problem, isn't it? Yeah, this is the this problem. This is why we were let down by Knives Out. Mm-hmm. Um, because, which I, I, I liked, I remember liking it more than you. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We don't have to review Knives Out. But it's not, it's an anti-murder mystery. Yeah. Um, purposefully, and, but. Purposefully, but disappointingly. Disappointingly, because yeah. Because the problem is, like, there really just isn't fucking any good murder mysteries out there's there. There's not a, there's not a lot. Yeah, you got to yeah. go you got to start going like way back. <laughs> right. And get... even Oh yeah, like you could like the third man. Is that even a murder mystery? Not I really. Fr- I haven't watched that death. in a while. Spoilers, Tom, but like it's a mystery of who what happened to him. Right. And then yes. the reveal is that oh, nothing happened to him. Well, like that's it's, that's, that's a, like a, a tw- it's like a, a midpoint reveal. There's more to it. Right. Yes, that's true. 
Uh, again, spoilers for The Third Man. Yes. Um, <laughs> spoilers for the 100-year-old film, The Third Man. Right. It's not that old. It's like 80 years old. Sure. Um, so, like, you that's sort of where the starting point is, is that this is st- still not quite a murder mystery, but it's like I, I, it's, I take what I can fucking get. Honestly, um, yeah. It's, yeah, just any little bit of it. Yeah, even Clue. You think about Clue, like, that's a great movie um, that we all love and cherish. But as a murder mystery, it kind of just throws it away, you know? It has four endings. It, it's the whole point of Clue is like, yeah, it could really be anybody. Right. The whole point of Clue is that it doesn't matter. Right. Um, um, so I'm, to find like a good, solid murder mystery, the Orient like Express movie, the I or- guess, but that's, that's not a great movie. There, there was a. There are good versions of it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Seven. Seven's a good murder mystery, but it's not quite... Scream? Scream is a murder mystery. Sure. And that's... I guess that's weird. That That's where I'm thinking my head is at, where it's like... for Like, like how do you define a murder mystery? I, I always think of it, it as... Yeah, a whodunit. It's a list of suspects, and you have to... You know that one of them did it, right? So like seven doesn't really count. Man, I'm I'm I looked up like murder mystery movies, uh, and this, I'm looking through this Mary Claire article that's a Marie Claire, that's uh, the 42 best murder mystery movies of all time. Like two of these have been murder mysteries, right? The rest of it is shit like Memento and Get Out. It's like what the fuck right. are you talking about? <laughs> Girl with the dragon tattoo, that's technically one, although you don't really, it, it's not, it, it goes all over the place, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing the girl in the train, which again is, that was is okay. more like a- That was all right. Yeah. It was a whodunit. One, it was a whodunit, but you also could believe it would be a random person would show up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, again, it has to be like, who out of this group? Like, we know it's somebody here, so who did it? And so, like, Scream, Scream was like- pretty effective with that because what i was getting at is that it has to throw a lot of fucking red herrings your way it has to scream loved doing that you know they would be like oh the cop has the same boot as the killer right and they, it has they to do be stuff like yeah that. my my qualifications is it has to be a, a clever mystery that's solvable that was the next part solvable and the clues have to, to be, be there. solvable yeah if and the audience movie, if the audience can't solve it then i think it's a cheat Right. What's Michael Gambon's uh, relationship with um, shit? Uh, the one who gets fired. Um, Emily Watson. They're Emily Watson. Thank you. Jesus. They're boning. Um, they're boning. Yeah. I couldn't. Re- I, okay. Yeah. Um, right. Because all right. That's what I was going to talk about. Sorry. I was going through my notes. Like at one point, he like the first thing he does is he's like, "Oh, you got crumbs on your dress," and like brushes her dress, and it's like very clear. Like, ooh. Yeah. Touchy, touchy there, Gambin. Yeah, Little... you're, yeah, you're not clear that it's reciprocal at that point. You're just exactly. like, oh, he's being a creep and creeping on his servants. And then we get another scene where we're like, oh, she's actually like, it seems like there's a relationship here. And then what gets her fired is she speaks up to defend him against right. uh, his wife, who is Kirsten Scott Thomas, who I don't believe we've mentioned yet. Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> this movie has so many goddamn people in it. Yeah. And Too she many. starts to say, uh, she says, that's not fair, Billy. And his name is Sir William. So it's like, well. Right. <laughs> well, you're fired. Yeah. Look, we, all, we all know you guys. I mean, this is, this, is, this is 1930s, uh, like right. high society London. You may be going to prison for all I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I do love, by the way, this is an aside, but like having worked in a lot of fancy restaurants, I mm-hmm. love that things have never changed. Yeah. Whereas that like the help is basically spending their time swearing and fucking and smoking cigarettes. Yep. And it's like, yeah, that's that's working in a fancy restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, on- the only difference is, like, they'd be railing coke, too. Right, exactly. If it was, if it was more modern. Yeah. Or crushed up Adderall. Um, sure. Uh, Either uh, or. Uh, uh, yeah. Speed of some kind would be involved. But this movie really scratches the itch for a murder mystery, is what I'm getting at, because mm-hmm. watching it, Every time I watch it, I notice little things, and those clues might not lead you to the killer, but like that relationship that those two are stupid, uh sets up the motive, you know what I mean? But not for her, for somebody else. Yes. And they put all those pieces together like that, and it's really, it's really well done. And then the red herrings 
they do a good job with those because they still satisfy what those are. The, everybody's like, what's with this Ryan Phillippe guy? Uh, he seems really sketchy. And then the movie answers that. Uh, and do I they really... answer the th- one of the X factors that I didn't get um, is the stuff with like Dorothy, who's one of the maids and Mr. Jennings, who's the butler or Mr. Jenkins. I forget. Uh, he's the guy from the Mothman prophecies. We just saw him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah Alan, Alan Ball, I think is his name. Helen Mirren was just in uh, uh damn. I don't even remember white Knights. She was, that was in her, that. right? Yeah. She was in that. Yeah. Um, there's a su- one of the sub one of the many subplots is uh one of the douche canoes is there to like blackmail Gambon um yeah. and we never find out what the blackmail is at least I didn't detect it I know yeah you're right I don't think we they, do they give up because like he he's already married to somebody in the family but he's schmoozing on somebody who's more closely related to Gambon uh that right. the the character's name is Isabel uh. And she gives him a check at one point, but then his wife makes him tear it up. And then Isabel overhears how he's like really feels about her, how he's just like using her. So she's like, fine, you're fucking cut off. Get out of this house. And we like never we I don't think we ever learn what that blackmail is. But we know that it's clearly very upsetting to Mr. Jenkins or Mr. Jennings, whatever his name is. Butler. We'll say Jennings Um, because he gets shit faced after that. Yeah. Um, And he also seems worried about being found out as a deserter. Yes. They add that. So you think like, oh, maybe why is that's he so... it. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah, they're like, why is he so sketchy? And then yeah. later the cop uh, mentions that. Maybe that, you that, that, that you're that's right. Like that's a... probably what the letter yeah, was. Yeah, because he drinks and then he salutes in the mirror. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's so it's probably like what the black really upsetting to him. Yeah. Yeah. See, but that's what we're talking about. It's like the movie is so dense. <laughs> That. It's very dense. Yeah, there's like 50 characters, and all of them are directly involved in some subplot. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot going on, and from what I read, Altman, while he was directing, um, and everybody's using their own lav mics, uh, as opposed to having dedicated sound because he wanted overlapping dialogue. Right. Um, he wasn't. He didn't read the script while they were shooting. Like uh, he like relied on his script supervisors to make sure that the actors were like saying all the important things because he wanted the dialogue and everything to sound really oh, natural. That's so neat. I know. Also, the camera never stops moving. Did you notice that? No, I didn't. That's great. It's always slightly in motion. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's all it's always at least slightly in motion. It's never completely huh. at rest. That's really interesting. That works for the plot. Because, mm-hmm. again, it feels like one big machine where there's just yep. so many moving parts. Exactly. It keeps going. Yeah. And I think what I always appreciate, I've made this comparison of other things before, but when, like it's like making a crossword puzzle. Because when you make a crossword puzzle, you know there's a theme. So you have to include specific words, right, in your crossword puzzle. Yeah. And that's the main thread in this case, the murder. But because it's a crossword puzzle, everything has to be interconnected in a way that it doesn't feel sweaty or clumsy. You mm-hmm. you have to abide by certain rules. And so you can, like, a really elegantly made crossword puzzle can do that, can, can create all these pieces. And some of them intersect with the main clues. Some of them might not. But it all feels part of one big uh, thing, one big piece. And so that's what this is. It's all these parts, all these characters all these moving pieces and some of them have to do with the main thread of who killed him. Some of them don't. And as we pointed out, it can also be ambiguous. Clive Owen is ambiguous, which reminds me of, um, there was actually a crossword puzzle, uh, before the, oh shit. The one where it was, uh, Bob Dole versus Clinton. 96. 96 where they had an answer that was the winner of tomorrow's election more or less and people would were like what the hell's going on you can't possibly know that and they had designed the crossword puzzle so that you could fill in either name which i thought was really cool because it means all the answers around it also have to be i'm just geeking about crossword puzzles now but you know what i mean it's just like i really like seeing writing where it all kind of fits together in this really snug way even allowing for it so that when the Clive Owen stuff happens, we're like, maybe it's him, but there's like a few people it could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really well done. Yeah, it is. This it, is, it, yeah, it's all, it I, makes, 
this is a hard movie to pull off. So it's very impressive. It feels hard to pull off. Maybe yeah. it wasn't. Maybe it was easy. Um, and then you couple that with this incredible cast, uh, well directed, this rainy English side setting, which mm-hmm. gets me rock hard, Tom. Oh yeah. Uh, that bullshit. I was just, uh, I was just like uh, as hard as granite this entire yeah. movie. I'm like yes, Making- feed me British gossip and intrigue. Yeah, motherfuckers drinking tea. It's just people Ew, just in the fucking. The murderer. Oh, it's so good. And then you got Stephen Fry bumbling around, touching evidence. I love his second in command. He yeah, keeps like, who's like trying to get his attention. He's yeah. like solving the case in the background while right. Stephen Fry's fucking around. So good. Um, and it's just like this movie is just like this beautiful fucking comfort food. Uh, that I don't know. I'm trying to think of why someone would not like Gosford Park. I guess it could be slow. It could be, yeah. Um, it's but like it's. The audio is done in such a way that it is a little difficult to hear. Um, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, you're not gonna you're not gonna catch all the dialogue, and no. until you settle into sort of oh that's the point. Like for the first half hour or so, it's like really distracting. You're like I cannot hear half of what these fuckers are saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's definitely that's an issue, and like you might not catch everything the first time. Mm-hmm. If you're paying enough attention, it'll be obvious. All the all the important information they make sure you are aware of. Yeah. I, I, so that uh, once that became clear, I was like, "Oh, okay. The rest of this is just gravy." Right. Um. The final thing, or the final thing in my notes mm-hmm. that I wanted to touch on is that no one cares when Michael Gambon dies. No, uh, they just keep it moving. Like, the party yeah. keeps going. The party keeps going. And, like, going. Stephen Fry's, like, apologetic for having to, like, disturb their fancy party with right. his murder investigation. Yeah, there's, like, this element throughout where it's, like, this is just the way things are done. It's a separate world. Yeah, and Bob Balban is, I love the part where they're, like, an Englishman does not get served at breakfast. And he's, like, really? Because we do, and we get served in America. That's interesting. Yeah, he's like, oh, like, that's interesting. I'll have to make a note of that because he's producing <laughs> yeah. a, a Charlie Chan in London. That that right. that murder movie, which is a real movie. Um, oh yeah, I uh, love how I yeah. love how little they think of the American. Well, yeah, well it's, it's. I I didn't read it necessarily as that, but he's like so other that they just don't really consider him part of the group. Like when right. Kirsten Scott Thomas lets Stephen Fry in and. He's on, like, he's just basically making phone calls the entire time back to Hollywood to, like, finagle with his movie. Fry's like, well, who's that? And she's like, oh, he's a visiting American, don't worry. And they just, and Fry never speaks to him. (laughs) He's like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, that's what makes it so interesting is that when, like, that's that's the whole thing is, like, before the murder happens... You see all that where it's like, we have to sit specific places in the table. Mm-hmm. The servants have to do this. There's clearly a line separating these two classes. Um, and then within the upper class and lower class, there's still like hierarchy. And then once a murder happens, you think like, oh, shit's going to change. And it doesn't. Nope. To the point that a, a this rich, uh, uh, notable guy who's just got killed his murder is going to go unsolved because they don't they don't want to be impolite mm-hmm. essentially yeah they don't want to be rude yeah and they can't imagine that any of the help uh and it almost it suddenly like the tables turn because like the help who are not considered like a a a, a high group like class group of people who are not privileged suddenly kind of have the privilege of like well it's not any of you you guys are fine like yeah, they immediately well, write them off. Well, the, the 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 help are the shrewd people, and they're the right. only people who really know what's going on in this movie. Exactly, and, and they're, they're the, the, only they're the people... smartest people in the room every single time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And to the and and they also don't seem to care. And there's like because it was there's this realization at a certain point where it's like most of these people, if they knew Helen Mirren did it, no one would turn her in. Nope. And that you get that impression from all these people, and to the point that when she comes in and like is like so you did it to helen mirren she's just like yeah and yeah, like no, yeah. explains it she kelly mcdonald just walks in and she's like why did you do it and yeah. helen mirren just stops and then just tells her why she did it yeah because it's just it it it's fine and, and it's sort of i i want to say symbolized by 
one of the last things that happens in the movie that I love um, is that um, she takes the dog mm-hmm. um, at the very end um, because Michael Gambon this whole time has a shitty little dog that no one likes and no one cares about. Uh, uh, and, and one of them, in fact, kicks um, this, this like shitty little, little rug. Yeah, little it's rug like a little dog. Pomeranian. Yeah, and then Emily Watson at the end, who's had a relationship with Michael Gammon, just kind of leaves with the dog. Yeah, she and takes no, the dog, and they're like, well, they, you better get it out of here before somebody notices, but I don't think right. anybody will notice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, because it's just like, yeah, no one cares. They're children. Um, somehow they're able to just do what they need to do with them. I don't know. It's it's uh, the dynamics, the power dynamics are really interesting in this. And as we've said, the point. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the idea of it as a machine is really, really uh, interesting, and I think very apt because that yeah, that's uh, that must be one of the things that Altman was thinking about, right? Which is why ultimately this might be <sighs> this might be my favorite murder mystery movie um, because it ha- more than any other murder mystery, as we've described, it's a bleak, bleak world out there for murder mystery movies, mm-hmm. and this has the elements that you that you want from one um a large cast of really good talented actors uh that you have to figure out who did it from a lot of moving pieces um all in one house like what more can you ask for not much yeah it's pretty close it's pretty close and sadly I, it's i will say that a lot yeah i will say that the recent adam sandler film murder mystery is surprisingly decent <laughs> as a mystery really? yeah it's not a bad mystery that's that's wild, Tom. Yeah. Good for them for being a mystery. I actually suspect a lot of the Knives Out sequels, because what else can they do but actually try to make murder mysteries? Right, I don't right. know if they'll he, succeed, but... He did, he did his subversion with the first one, so now it's like, well, I guess I actually have to make a Poirot out of this character, which was not the point. Right. Um, but I'd rather see that than whatever the me fuck too. that first movie was. Yeah, me too. I'd love to see a series of murder mystery movies Mm -hmm. to come out of that. I just hope they're able to write one. Well, there's, I mean, they seem hard to write. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Johnson's actual murder mystery brick is pretty decent. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah, Mm -hmm. like he's got it. Yes. But how (laughs) many murder mysteries does one person have in them? You know, Agatha Christie day. (laughs) Oh, right. She's a fucking machine. Well, that was back. That's like back in the, like, you ever read the Sherlock Holmes books? I like those, but you realize quickly, like, oh, right. It's really old and like. Yeah, a lot of these simply couldn't happen in modern day. Yeah, or or just like. Well, that's why you're making period movies if you have to, or. Yeah, or also just, it's more, I was thinking more of like, that was back when we hadn't thought of everything yet. So they, they could, they had, they could have like, you know, I was saying this about Dracula, like you. You know, if I was like, I got a good idea for a creature, it's a human, but they have t- like sharp teeth. People would be like, that's lame. That's Dracula. But like there was a time where that was like an amazing thought. You sure. Know? Yeah. So like murder mistress, I feel like might have been easier back in the day. Well, they were definitely easier weren't... because crimes were harder to solve. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You do. You do have yeah, that, to like. That's, that's what I meant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like the, you can't have cell phones and whatnot and all that bullshit uh cameras fucking yeah now you just have like murder mystery in a house the cops will just be like all right we'll just look at where all your phones were i mean like yeah like some of these old time like sherlock holmes era mysteries like unless the person has like a visible like gunshot wound to the face like there's like a 20 percent chance that they will successfully determine how the person even died right God, it was so much. Oh, it was so much better to be a murderer back then. Yeah, you could get away with so many murders. It was back great. Then. It was really easy. Weirdly enough, though, you know what's a? Uh, I don't even want to call it a murder mystery, but a good, I guess, murder mystery movie was Searching, and that like, that's modern as shit. Yeah, that was a good mystery. Yeah, it was a good idea. The recent uh, limited series Mayor of East Town. I enjoyed that mystery. I didn't see that. It's not bad. Yeah, sharp objects. That's a murder mystery. Sharp objects was good. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the, the 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 truth the truth the true detective. Yeah, I feel like maybe all the good mysteries are on TV right now because that's not what people are paying tickets yeah. to see. But I don't know. Maybe they would if you made some. 
I didn't mind the killing. The problem is with a lot of those TV murder mysteries is they're not really whodunits, where it's like, like True Detective uh, is like, once you learn who it is, you're like, fuck, I'm not going to figure that shit out. Like, it's just someone who's been kind of in a few scenes. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I think you, it, it, it was, not- it was right. It was, it was less about like, it, it leans more into the idea of the unknown on True Detective for sure. Yeah. They're more like procedurals. Yeah, it wants you to experience what the detectives are experiencing. Yeah, so there's like a lot of like dead ends and shit. Whereas just who out of this group of people murdered somebody? I don't know. I I can also see why that's like it's hard to keep making movies like that. Because like what you know, how do you vary them? Um, How do you make it fresh? What do you just change the location? I guess. Yeah, man. Change, like, yeah, I guess that is how you do it. You're like, I don't this know. is on it's, a train. I mean, if you just now if this you, is on a boat, you just give people a new nut to crack. Like, I that's true. It's again like crossword puzzles. You can keep making them if you make them well, because it's yeah. there's it's always just a mystery, and yeah, it's and like I, who amongst these people do you think did it? Here's all the clues. Yeah, I get the impulse to try to do something different with it, like with this movie, Gosford Park, and with Knives Out, because. I also agree with the thinking that like m- movies as a riddle is kind of like a a bad practice and it, it it's inspired yes. some of the worst form of of well entertainment criticism on the internet. Uh, yeah, it's 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 like doing a it's like a it's a weird it's like a televised magic trick where it's like, well, you have complete control. So we you you can lie in any way you want. Mm-hmm. Um, in the same way, watching a movie that's a mystery, it's like, well, you can just not show me things or choose to show me other things and manipulate me into thinking one thing, which is why it it can often be bad, done badly. Yes. It could be that Halle Berry movie, Perfect Stranger, you know, like where it's like, no, you, you cheated. You didn't actually, that's the, it has to be solvable thing. So yeah, it's hard to craft a really good one, um, without being cheap. Mm-hmm. Which is why I have so much love for Gosford Park. Yeah, this is a sweet film. Yeah. Um, I don't have any more thoughts about it. No, nah, Maggie Smith, man, <laughs> she's killing it. <laughs> Maggie, goddamn Smith. I think the only Oscar. I mean, this movie was nominated for and received a number of awards, but I believe the only Oscar it won was for screenplay. Yeah, which yeah, checks out. Good for them. That yeah. checks out. If it could win anything, it'd be that, right? Yeah, or directing. Yeah. Yeah, I would have made also, a strong. Do you know what movie it lost to, Dave? For directing? For directing. Oh no. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to double check this. Uh Let me because if if I'm right, this is just like really oh, really no. stupid. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yep, it what? Won, it lost to a beautiful mind. <laughs> Those dumbasses. Yep. <laughs> what assholes. You dorks. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is also, by the way, this is the coming of the Clive, right? Like, he's he did plenty before this. He did a shocking amount of stuff since the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, no one cared about uh, his bullshit. No. And then he shows up in this, and we're like, give him a born identity. And then he shows up in that, and uh, and then and then he's King Arthur. Bing, bang, boom. Yep. King Arthur and Beyond Borders. Remember Beyond Borders? I do. That's an yeah. embarrassing film. Yeah. And then Closer, and then they're like, Sin City? Fuck yeah. And then he's got the Children of Men. Mm-hmm. Uh, God mm. damn. And next thing you know, he's doing Last Nights. And Valerian, City of and a Thousand Valerian. Planets. Oh, yeah. And Anon. God yeah. damn it, Clive. Oof. Damn it, Clive. Clive. We need you back. All right. All right. Yeah, we're we're done here. We're done. Hey, Harrison Millie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this. We knew this was coming for like a month, and I've been sitting here just thinking about watching just Gosford thinking Park. about Gosford Park. Yeah. Always am. Um, this was through our Patreon. If you're interested, you can go to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We have uh, exclusive podcasts on there, like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Muller is a Maniac. Also, Star Trek The Next Futurama. New episode is out right now. It came out this week. Uh, so check that out. 
Oh, man, we also have a store, tpublic.com slash store slash Gameplay Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. Check that out. Woo! Do it! Watch, watch Gosford Park. Watch Gosford Park. Maggie Smith. You pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck you all. Fuck you. That's what we've landed on. All yep. right. All right. Watch Gosford Park.